it's tough to find people who you feel like you can actually talk to or feel like, well, listen, you know, or you can speak to without fear of judgment, you know? I'm very jealous of people who have no fear of judgment, who could just be fully who they are with no hesitation, you know? I've been thinking about that a lot this year because this year I met Dennis Rodman. Do you guys know Dennis Rodman? <laughs> Does anyone not know Dennis Rodman? If anyone needs a recap, okay, so Dennis Rodman, he was a Hall of Fame basketball player, he played with Michael Jordan, uh, a crazy person. <laughs> he had rainbow hair, uh, he pierced his dick, uh, uh, cheated on Carmen Electra and Madonna, best friends with Kim Jong-un, uh, uh, wore a wedding dress after a game one time when they asked him why, he said, because I'm cool as fuck. <laughs> Married himself on television. Anyway, I did his relationship advice podcast. Because <laughs> when you pierce your dick and marry yourself on TV, you're like, I should pass this wisdom on to the kids. <laughs> Selfish to hang on to all of it myself. <laughs> so I did it with my friend. Uh, she and I pretended to be in a relationship. We were not uh, actually uh, dating, but they were looking for couples, and I wanted to meet him. And I, I've always said this. When only one lie stands between you and Dennis Rodman, <laughs> you tell it. So we met him, we met Dennis Rodman. Uh, man, if you're wondering how's Dennis Rodman's relationship advice, just, you know, questionable. <laughs> this is the first thing Dennis Rodman said to me. First thing Dennis Rodman, best friend of Kim Jong-un, said to me is, uh, I just walk in and I'm just wearing like a regular hoodie and he looks me up and down and he's like, oh, look at you all gay. <laughs> I was like, you, you can't say that. And he tries to backpedal. He's like, no, I meant, I meant like happy and gay, which like, man, what a rebound. Uh, truly one of the great rebounders. A weird save on Robin's part. I don't know if I come off gay, but I still want to come off happy. <laughs> I don't know if I come off a gayer person than I do a happy individual. I went because I just wanted to make fun of him. I just wanted to make up a, a name or some identity and then just like kind of laugh at him, you know. But the, my friend, she gave our real info. So they had that we were comedians. They had a real name. So I was like, all right, fine, pivot. Full sincerity to Dennis Rodman. I'll just talk about real relationship issues I've had in this fake context to Kim Jong-un's friend. <laughs> and we'll see how it goes. He was like, how long have you been with your girlfriend who is not... Uh, my girlfriend, and I was like, two years? And he was like, shit, 24 months? Robman is weirdly good at math. <laughs> he does not need religion. <laughs> his biggest advice, he's like, always, always play it cool. That was his biggest advice. He's like, you always have to play it cool. <laughs> he's like, one time Carmen Electra, she walked in on me, and I was having a threesome with two women in our bed, so I just played it cool. <laughs> I was like, how do, you, how, do you, how do you play that cool? And he's like, well, she walked in and she was like, who the fuck are these women? So I just said, what women? <laughs> I don't see any women here. And he's like, stuff like that works. I was like, how long are you guys married? He's like, like five months. So I was like, well, it didn't work. Like it's maybe the opposite of what it means to work. And it makes sense why you measure relationships in months. It suddenly adds up. But he has no filter at all. Once he found out I was Jewish, he had a real field day with that. Rodman has some theories. He's like, you're Jewish? My producer out there, he's Jewish. He's always saying shit like, oh, I'm Jewish, I'm gonna go get my teeth cleaned. Just like a, like, like a new stereotype. He's so unique, he does anti-Semitism differently. Most people are like, the Jews, they run the banks. He's like, with those pearly whites. They're always flossing. And then after done recording, I was like, what are you doing after this? And he's like, I have a dentist appointment. <laughs> he was gonna go get his teeth cleaned like a fucking Jew. <laughs> it's cultural appropriation according to him and him alone. <laughs> it's a bizarre thing where it's like, I almost felt bad for him because it's like he has no, but he's been so unique. It was after a suicide attempt, that's when he decided I'm gonna be fully unique and not care what anybody thinks of me. But then he's like, got nobody. Like, I was the third guest on his podcast. He ran out of people that weren't me after two. <laughs> That's crazy. 
Like, imagine being so unique and isolated. You have to become friends with one of the most sociopathic, psychotic lunatics, Michael Jordan. And <laughs> Kim Jong-un. But I'm jealous of just some aspects of him. Like, you guys know the phrase on second thought? Sure. Rodman doesn't. <laughs> He has half a thought and a full action. <laughs> One time he posed nude for PETA, you know, the animal rights organization. He announced, I support PETA and posed nude for them. Something PETA didn't ask him to do. <laughs> Nobody asked him to do it. Imagine that. He was just like, I like ducks, here's my dick. And he won five championships. <laughs> we should all be 10% more like Dennis Rodman. And Rodman should be 90% less like Dennis Rodman. <laughs> And that's the only math I can do. <laughs> but it's weird, because I did find myself like opening up to him at some point, because I felt like, you're afraid to open up because you're afraid to be judged, right? But he's not going to judge you, because he's so weird. He's so himself, it lets you be yourself. So I could just be honest and be like, yeah, I don't know, I feel like I'm very slow to trust people, because I feel like I've been burned, and I've, I'm nervous to trust fall into somebody, because I feel like I don't think ultimately anybody will care about me enough to sacrifice their own immediate wants and self-interests, you know? And he'd just be like, yeah, I ate a squirrel. And he'd be like, all right, I guess those are both sentences. <laughs> and yet I feel safe. You've added perspective. I think you're my emergency contact. I don't know. Thank you guys so much. Stan Perlman, have a great night. Keep it going for Dan, huh?